Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm today's host, Coleman Hodges, and joining us today, we have got five-time Olympic medalist, two-time Olympic champion. I'm just going to call her the NCAA master. We're sitting down with Kate Douglas. Kate, how's it going? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. Just yeah. enjoying some nice relaxation and yeah, just, you know, enjoying everything that I accomplished over the summer. This episode of the Swim Swam podcast is sponsored by Commit Swimming, Swim Swam's exclusive team management software partner. Since 2015, Commit has been providing coaches with swimming's leading workout management software. And now, Commit has team management software too. Commit wants to help you make the switch from Team Unify to a simpler, more powerful solution. Their onboarding and customer service team will walk you through every step of the way. Check them out at commitswimming.com to book your demo today. That's C-O-M-M-I-T swimming. Dot com. It's so fun talking to um, athletes after the Olympics and to hear that they're actually taking a load off, you know, taking a break. Um, I just spoke with Reagan yesterday. I heard you guys had a nice vacation. Yeah. Like that's, I, yeah. How, how is, how have the last couple weeks been since Paris for you? Yeah, they've been good. Um, yeah, we, me, Reagan, and Maxine Parker, um, we all went uh, on vacation together, which was really fun. I feel like that was a good time to kind of just get away from, you know, everything and just relax on the beach for a little bit. So that was nice. But yeah, Reagan and I, we are also going to, we're going to the World Cup in October. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have been like trying to get back in the pool a little bit this last week or so. So, um, yeah, I've kind of been swimming a little bit, um, you know, now that I'm back in Charlottesville, but kind of just, I mean, there aren't any like official team practices or anything. So I'm kind of just enjoying being able to swim a little bit, but not be too worried about it. Um, and yeah, just kind of enjoying now being back in Charlottesville, being with all my friends who I got to see a little bit in Paris, but I didn't really get to hang out with them. So it's kind of nice to get to, yeah, spend a lot of time with them now. I heard there was a surprisingly big um, contingent of who's in Paris. Is that right? Yeah, there were a lot. I mean, I would say, I mean, yeah, all of my friends were there. There was like pretty much most of my class of girls and then most of Alex's class of girls. They were all there. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of them did like a big Europe trip and then kind of ended um, in Paris getting to watch all of us, but yeah, they had a blast. Um, they definitely got to experience a fun side of Paris, one that I didn't really get to, but <laughs> yeah, no, I, it was so awesome that they all came and supported. And I think the coolest part was how like kind of people from other teams or even my friends at home, they're like, oh my gosh, like you have so many like friends there who came and supported you. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's awesome that they all made the journey to come and watch us. It just shows how much you know, they support us and how much they love us. And I mean, I really appreciated all of them being there. It was super fun that we all got to experience it together. <laughs> no kidding. I mean, I feel like it helps when four of, or I guess, you know, you have four people on your team make the Olympic team. It's yeah. like, uh, it incentivizes them a little more to, <laughs> to go and watch. But I mean, it, like, I, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. watching a couple of times on NBC. It's like, Holy cow. That's, that's a lot of Virginia swimmers, which is so yeah. cool to see. Yeah. And I was even lucky. I had a lot of, there are a lot of my high school friends there and a lot of my friends and my parents' friends from New York. Like uh, there just were so many people there like supporting me. And it was kind of crazy. Cause I was like, I felt like everyone who was like important in my life was like there with me, you know? So it was just an awesome, you know, experience for me to get to see all of them. No kidding. I mean, yeah, what that sounds so great. And yeah. it also su such sounds like such a juxtaposition to Tokyo, right? Mm -hmm. um, but one of the questions I was had for you was compared to Tokyo, like having just had an Olympic experience. Um, and obviously, I mean, I feel like it's fair to say you've evolved as an athlete since Tokyo as well. 
Um, did you go, going into Paris, did you have certain things that you were either hoping to happen or like had set as goals, not necessarily like medals, um, or times, but just about the Olympic experience itself? Yeah. I mean, I think I just was hoping to kind of have like be able to just experience it all more. I feel like in Tokyo, like we got to be in the village and stuff, but like we still, it's not like we like really explored it that much. It's not like we, it's not like we went out, you know, into Tokyo, like the city and did anything. Cause we were all kind of confined to like certain areas and spaces. And so I feel like this time around was cool just to like, everything was a little bit more loose. We were able to, you know, we could go to the dining hall and not have to worry about like, you know, being around other people and stuff. And so I thought that was cool. And I thought it was cool to kind of experience like Paris as a city a little bit. And um, yeah, just kind of being able to walk around even like in between sessions, like at the pool, you could kind of leave the pool area and kind of walk around and go get a meal at like a restaurant kind of around there. And so I felt like that was kind of nice just to kind of like get out a little bit and not be, you know, just like super confined to like just the village and the pool, I could kind of, you know, see, see a little bit more and, you know, take my mind off of everything a little bit. I mean, as you said, I, most, I, most, if not all Olympics are in these great cities and mm -hmm. as athletes, it is inherent that you don't get to experience a part of it, but it is really nice when you get to at least <laughs> have yeah. some local cuisine or, or, mm -hmm. or, as you said, take your mind off of the matter at hand, um, athletically. So that sounds, yeah, that sounds really nice. And it's cool mm -hmm. that you got to do that. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot more of Paris I would hope to experience. Um, and I actually will soon because I'm going back to watch the Paralympic games. Um, so okay. I'm excited to actually experience Paris without any of the swimming part. So <laughs> that'll be super fun. And I've been looking forward to that, but yeah, uh, I'm going to watch my friend um, Allie Truett swim at the Paralympics. So that's something I'm also very excited about coming up. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Is is that something that was you had on the books for a while? Did that just come up kind of last minute after you were in Paris? Yeah, I kind of like planned this trip when we were at like training camp in Croatia. I was kind of thinking about going and then I was like, you know what, I'm like, I'm going to go. I want to go watch her swim. And since I'm not taking class this semester, I kind of have a lot more free time. And that's kind of why I chose not to take class so that I could, you know, do things like this. And yeah, Allie's just been a huge support, like huge supporter of me, of the Walshes. Like she came to watch us at, um, at Olympic trials. Um, she's someone that we, we all swam with when we were um, in high school and middle school for the Walshes. So um, and yeah, and she's just been an inspiration to all of us. And yeah, it's just something now I'm, yeah, I think after not being able to experience the entirety of Paris and all it has to offer, I'm kind of like, I'm really excited that I do get to go back now and really get to take it all in. So I'll be excited to be a spectator this time around. No kidding. Yeah. How, um, how long will you be there? I'm doing a really quick trip. I'll be there for like only three, four days, um, just because I can't really miss that much training. But yeah, it'll be it'll be enough time. Yeah, you'll you'll you as you said, you'll get to be a spectator, get to see mm -hmm. some of the city. Yeah, um, that sounds that sounds really nice, especially in the fall when you can miss a little bit of training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking of training, how t can you tell me a little bit about training camp? Um, in Croatia, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, just coming off of the back of trials. Uh, how were you feeling? I'll, I'll back up. How are you feeling about your Olympic trials overall? Um, yeah, I was very happy with how trials went. I feel like my goal going into trials was to make those three events that I did make. And so I was just very happy with how that panned out. Um, and yeah, I think just being able to win all those events at trials too was just super cool, something I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do. Um, I know I wasn't feeling my best like physically at trials, um, but obviously I kind of had to, you know, push that out of my mind and just swim my races. And I was really happy that I was able to do that. And yeah, with how they all turned out, it was great. 
I'm, I'm not super sure on the timeline of this. Um, when, when did you decide not to swim the hundred freestyle in Paris? That was something I was like kind of discussing with Todd the week after trials um, and during training camp a little bit. It's something that was like in the back of my mind going into trials, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with that. Um, I knew that I wanted to swim it at trials because I wanted to earn a relay spot. And I felt like if I didn't swim it, you know, they, you know, I wouldn't have fully earned that spot. And so I wanted to just kind of see what I had at trials and swim it. Um, but then really thinking about my lineup for Paris, I just, I really felt like I had a good shot of winning gold in the two breast. And I was kind of like, I feel like I need to protect that chance. And not that I didn't have confidence in my hundred free, but I knew that it was going to have to take an amazing race to medal in that. And I just felt like it was better just to focus on, you know, one or the other. And I felt like the two breast was better for me to focus on. And so then I ultimately ended up, yeah, not swimming the hundred free, which I was upset about just because, I mean, I wanted to, you know, it's kind of hard to like give away a individual spot because I was like, I would have loved to swim the hundred free at the Olympics, but just with the way, you know, all the events lined up, it just wouldn't make sense for me. It's a hard, hard double, I assume. Yeah. I've never yeah, you know, I feel like, yeah, it's something like world championships and stuff. Like Todd was saying, you know, it's like worth it to try to do a double like that. But for something like the Olympics, it felt like it wasn't really worth the risk of doing that. So I was happy with the decision. I, I think something that, that is easy to forget as a fan or as anyone who is not actually the person in the pool is that Olympics and Olympic spots are not guaranteed <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, times are not automatic. And so, yeah, if you have to pull a double like that, it's like, it, it's not, it, it doesn't just happen. Like you have to make it happen. You have to go through all, all the processes and, and the steps to do it. And then nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. So I think it makes a lot of sense to, uh, put co consolidate some eggs metaphorically yeah, yeah absolutely i definitely think you know in the past i've also just like noticed that my two breasts like it still can be pretty decent after 100 free but it's always a lot better when i don't have 100 free before it um and so yeah i definitely felt like that you know the 100 free would have taken something out of me for that two breast so yeah yeah the which <laughs> fair enough right um so then heading into training camp You've obviously, you earned your spot on the uh, not relay in the 100 freestyle, but your individual events changed a little bit. Did that affect the way you approach training camp or how your coaches had you approach training camp? Honestly, not really. I think at training camp, no matter really like what I'm swimming, I feel like I stick with the same training plan that I usually have. And I mean, training for the 100 free helps me also train for the 2IM. So I kind of, yeah, I kind of like didn't really change anything, honestly. Um, and I also was still training for um, 100 free on the relays. So it was kind of the same training that I was used to, um, you know, going into trials and the same going into the Olympics. Yeah. Um, what was it like? I mean, I think in Tokyo you had Alex, but this time you had both Walsh's, you had Emma Weber. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had Todd, Todd was the head coach this time. Yeah. Like how, how was it having such a UVA contingency in Croatia? Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. I definitely was so lucky that Todd got to be there um, and got to coach me. Cause I feel like that always, it's always nice just, and you know, I feel like I sometimes take it for granted that my coach is there with me. Cause I feel like it just always helps at least me um, just that he kind of like sees how I'm doing in practice and knows how to adjust things, um, you know, if we need to adjust. But yeah, it was, you know, so great having a bunch of my teammates there. Um, I mean, it's always awesome to, you know, not have to really train by yourself. And I got to train with girls that I train with all the time. So it kind of just, you know, felt a little bit like normal for us, but, you know, just in a beautiful place. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, great that I had a huge group of girls training with me. How'd you feel? Was, was the training good? I mean, the double taper is always tough. And I feel like, honestly, more just like, it's more mentally tough. Um, just like during that training camp, because 
like your body, it's just hard to go from taper and go like right back into everything back into lift and then start to taper again, like just nothing feels good. And mentally, it's just like, you're kind of just like, am I even gonna like swim faster? Like I feel horrible right now. And so I feel like for me, it was definitely just like a struggle. There were a few practices where I was like, I'm going so slow, like, there's no way this is gonna be good. But you know, I just had to kind of pull it together and, you know, understand that everyone else was kind of going through that too. And we just all kind of, you know, gave our best effort in practice and trusted that the coaches knew what was best for us. But yeah, the double taper, it always sucks. It never feels good. That's a bummer, especially because I feel like, especially for Americans in the college system, it happens kind of a lot. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it, it obviously as you said, the coaches know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They've, they've, they've had a few rodeos in this. Um, I'm also curious about, do you feel like your experience earlier in the year at, at the Doha world championships, um, directly carried over? Uh, you've obviously been to, um, several international meets since Tokyo, but, um, you know, that was, kind of a, a curveball meet. It doesn't normally happen at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, do, were you, were you happy with the experience you got there? Um, once you kind of got to Paris and had that, uh, you know, another big international meet just five months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, I do think it was, I mean, I was happy I went to Doha. I don't think it like hurt me in any way. And mm -hmm. I mean, I do think it's, it was good to kind of get the experience of a long meet that was like, that meet was like an eight day meet, I think. And just kind of experiencing the prelim semis and finals. I don't think that's ever a bad thing because when you get to these meets, like it is just a lot of racing and, you know, one race is stretched out over two days. And so I feel like that was a good thing for me to experience again. And yeah, I was happy I did it. And I also do feel like, yeah, back in Doha, I did that hundred free two breast double again, which sucked. And it's, honestly the hardest thing I've ever done. And so I feel like after doing that, anytime I do a 200 breaststroke now without a hundred free beforehand, I'm just like, this is so easy. Like, this is fine. It's not like I'm going to be able to finish it. So I do feel like doing that double again, like definitely helped me just kind of take away like any fear before the two breast that I ever had. And so that's definitely been a good thing for me. Yeah. Um, I'm also curious about the you swim the 400 free relay which is day one and mm -hmm. then you have two two days off three days off you yeah, have like a chunk of time where you're not racing yeah i have three days off mm -hmm. it's, I, it, it sounds like a lot right of, yeah. of just kind of like okay meet mode let's go have a race like adrenaline and then okay stop for three days mm -hmm. but like still kind of stay in meet mode um how do you feel like that transition went yeah honestly i was i was really happy i was swimming the first day because i feel like at trials i didn't swim until day like four or so and i just remember getting like super antsy and anxious like those first three days just like sitting around not doing anything and like just watching everyone else make the team and i was like just sitting there and i was like oh, i want to go like when is it my turn um and so i was really happy this time around that i didn't have to experience that and i got to kind of race the first night, you know, I got a medal on the first night. And I feel like that really helped just kind of, you know, make me feel a little bit less anxious and make me just like, it kind of helped to kind of like, you know, get going in the meet. And then it definitely was tough, like, you know, sitting around for three days and just kind of not doing much. But um, I feel like I feel like we did a good job with kind of handling the training with that. Like I did a few breaststroke practices those three days um, leading into the two breast. And I feel like it honestly like didn't bother me too much sitting around for those days but yeah i was honestly i think it was better than trials um the way that it worked out for me yeah it's a, it, it sounds better than trials as you said just in terms of you get to get into the meat a little mm -hmm. bit i getting a medal on day one can't hurt yeah i mean it definitely takes the pressure off a little bit you know it's already like have a medal after the first night it's like okay this is exciting but you know again it's kind of like you're like you still gotta you know focus on other events you can't just let you know that be the end of the meet yeah i don't know what your focus was heading into this tuner breast but 
it, it's it's an event that you didn't swim at the Olympics in Tokyo. You've obviously mm -hmm. swam it internationally since, but you're going up against the reigning defending champion, former world record holder, and mm -hmm. she wins the hundred breasts. So it's like you kind of know that she's on. Yeah. How are you feeling heading into that race? Yeah, I mean, I definitely knew I, you know, couldn't count out Tatiana. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I was honestly just pretty excited to get to race her because I don't feel like I ever got to like, you know, fully do like a one on one race with her um, in that in that event, at least one that I didn't have 100 free beforehand. So I just knew it was going to be fun to, you know, kind of just, yeah, race each other in that event. Um, and yeah, I felt pretty, I just felt, you know, pretty confident going into that race that um, I just knew, you know, I had a race plan that I had to stick to and I just had to focus on that and, um, yeah, just kind of swim my own race in it and then, you know, race Tatiana towards the end, like at that last 50. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I feel like the, how many times I've done that race with the hundred free beforehand. Now I kind of like, don't have much anxiety when it comes to swimming that race as opposed to like other races. And so I kind of get excited to swim it. Like. I'm not really like scared. Like sometimes like when I'm in the two IM ready room, I'm just like super scared of how bad it's going to hurt. But I feel like with two breasts, it just like doesn't hurt the same. And so I get like excited to kind of just see what I can do um, and kind of just see how my training is going to, you know, show in that race. As a fan, when I watch specifically use from the tuner breast, my mind just kind of goes blank. Cause I'm like, Kate's breaststroke is so aesthetically pleasing. Like <laughs> your stroke is so like long and smooth. And so like, I just assume you start swimming and then that's it. But obviously you have, a. am guessing <laughs> you have a race. Can you talk me through in that 200 breast final? Um, you know, I'm guessing there's, there's an amount of pressure. There's, you got the crowd. The crowd was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. but then what is your race plan heading into that final and how do you feel like it went for you? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like what helps take away the nerves a little bit is just, I kind of just like know exactly like what I'm going to do when I like dive in. And for the two breast, I have a specific stroke count that I stick to. Um, I pretty much like count my strokes subconsciously, just like in practice every day. And so I kind of know exactly what to hit and, throughout this year, I've kind of changed, my race plan has changed a little bit um, as my breaststroke has also like improved and gotten stronger. And so, yeah, I just had like a stroke count that I knew I wanted to stick to and that it was a stroke count that I did when I went the American record back in January. And so my plan was just to kind of hit that and, you know, see what happened. And so, yeah, that specifically is, it's 14, 16, 17 and 19 strokes. Um, and I believe in the final um, in Paris, I took 20 strokes on the last lap, probably because I was trying to push a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of my whole focus the entire time during the race. That seems that seems nice. Like you just counting. Yeah, <laughs> you don't, honestly, you don't like have to worry about anything else. Yeah, like I honestly like love swimming the two breasts these days. Like I get excited to do it, um, and I think that definitely kind of has helped my success in the event. You know, if you're excited to swim it, it's more likely to go well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense, right? Yeah. Like it on paper, it checks out, um, mm -hmm. it's, but that's great to hear. And uh, I mean, congrats on gold. How Thanks. did, how did that feel? You know, I mean, is that something you'd thought about a lot? Is it something you tried not to think about um, of, of just winning an individual gold medal at the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something I never really thought I was capable of until like, I feel like maybe when I first broke that American record in the two breasts in January and went at 219, I was like, okay, like that's maybe potential, you know, to get on the top of a podium in the two breasts. But obviously I knew girls have been faster and there were other girls who were also close to that throughout the year. Um, but I, so I feel like it was something that like was in the back of my mind and I was like, this would be like super cool if I did this. But at the same time, I was like, it probably won't happen because like it's very hard to do, you know, and I don't know. I think, yeah, I was just kind of like, I don't know if this is like possible just because I feel like winning a gold medal in the Olympics always just seemed something like that was so like unattainable for me. 
and like so out of reach. And yeah, so then when I like finally, you know, saw that I accomplished that, like, yeah, it was just a crazy feeling where I feel like I was kind of just like in shock. And I remember my whole family, I think they were just like, oh my God, I can't believe she just did that. Like, and I kind of felt the same way. Um, but it was super awesome just to experience that whole moment. And honestly, I feel like I really appreciated, like Lily was so excited for me. Um, and she was so supportive, like before the race, she was very excited for me. She was like, you got this. And, um, I was, yeah, it was very nice to have her support. And then I remember after the race, she was just kind of like, this is your moment, like go soak it all up. And I was like, Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> but yeah, it was, you know, just super awesome moment that night. Did moving forward a little bit, um, did you do, did you do the walk of fame or closing ceremonies? No, okay. I did not. Yeah, no, I did not stay in Paris long enough to do either of those. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, cause I, I'm, it's kind of funny, like, it's great to hear you say you soaked up the moment that night mm -hmm. and talking to other athletes who, especially specifically like the walk of fame, like it's certainly something people didn't get in Tokyo where they like mm -hmm. really got to celebrate and like have that, have that moment. Like you said, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would have loved to do that, but yeah, it was tough because all of us who swam until basically like the last two days of the meet, we just had like one day to do media and everything. And then we were all kind of, you know, moving on or traveling because we also, we got kicked out of the village too. So it's kind of <laughs> just a pain to like stay in a hotel. I was like, I'm not doing that. So I was like, I want to go home. <laughs> so then I went home, which I was very happy about also. Yeah. Um, but that's, it's so great to hear that you did get to be present in that and like really soak up the moment. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the medal ceremonies are nice, but it, they're kind of formal, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't necessarily get to have all the celebration. So it's nice that you, that you got the whole night, right. To really, yeah. to really soak it in and be present. Has, has that, um, have you been able to like sit with that in the last couple of weeks? Is it, and like really soak it in? Is it, has it felt any different? Has it, have you been like, Oh, Hey mom, I'm an Olympic champion. So you got to make me breakfast now. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like, yeah, I've kind of, I mean, I feel like, yeah, I've soaked it up a little bit, but I've kind of been also like, you know, okay, what's next? Like ready to move on a little bit, but yeah, it has been cool to kind of like, it's been cool to, I think, like show people my medal and stuff. And, you know, everyone, like when they see an Olympic medal for the first time, like it's super cool. Um, and so I feel like it's been cool to get to share that with people. Um, and that's definitely helped me be like, okay, yeah, like, you know, all these little girls think that I'm like the coolest person ever. So like, that's pretty awesome. Cause like, I'm not really, but it's just, <laughs> Yeah, like I think just seeing all the little kids and how excited they are and just, yeah, all of my friends and stuff, like I think that's definitely helped me, you know, kind of soak in, you know, what I really like accomplished this summer. I didn't even think of that aspect of it, but, you know, I everyone says it takes a village, right? And yeah. it, it, it sounds like such a great experience to share that with your friends, your family, mm -hmm. your loving audience. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> And, and miniature admirers. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's very cool to hear that um, you've been able to process it in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then the best race of the entire swim meet, I was so excited for the 200 IM. This was like, I, mm -hmm. this was my must see race. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, you have four women at their absolute peak who could all, who all have a shot at gold. Um, and you had experience in this event from past Olympics, from past mm -hmm. world champs, um, after the 200 breast, were you still afraid of the 200 IM pain? Yeah, I think I'm always going to be afraid of the 200 IM pain. It is just, I don't know. It is just a painful event. I feel like the whole time, like after the butterfly i'm just like oh my god there's no way i'm gonna finish but every time i do finish and 
it's usually not too bad. So I tried to remember that. Um, <laughs> I kind of tried to remember just, I remember in Doha, like I slammed that 200 IM final and I was pretty sick there and I had no idea like how that was going to go. And I remember just like kind of feeling on my deathbed, like in the ready room. And then I ended up going a best time. And so I was kind of like, okay, like I've done this race before feeling terrible. And so I like, I can do it right now. Um, and so I feel like, yeah, just all of my past experience has kind of helped give me confidence in that race, but I'm always scared of that race. So I was definitely a little nervous, <laughs> especially knowing that, you know, there were four girls in that race who could go crazy fast times and one of them could not medal. So it was just kind of like, damn, this is going to be tight. And <clears throat> on top of it, you all swim it so differently. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has how I, I'm, I'm guessing you just really have to put on the blinders and stick mm -hmm. to your race plan. But, you know, heading into a final like that, is there any sort of other managing of expectations or emotions knowing that everyone's going to kind of be all over the place? I mean, yeah, I think it's like you said, I kind of just swim my own race. I really try to not like when I start to get stressed out about the people next to me, I feel like I then start to kind of try too hard in the race. And I feel like I swim better when I swim more like relaxed. And so to do that, I kind of just have to, I feel like be confident in my own race strategy and know that even if I am in last place after the backstroke, there is still a chance that I could finish the race well. And so that is kind of what yeah, I just kind of had to be confident in that because, yeah, my backstroke was definitely pretty rough in the final. Um, that wasn't the plan, but that's what happened. But, yeah, I was able to just push it on the breaststroke and kind of just give it all I had in the freestyle, which is what I do when I swim that race. And, yeah, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. Do you – is there anything you attribute to to your backstroke not firing like you had wanted it to in that? Um, Honestly – I don't know. I mean, I've definitely like worked on my backstroke a lot this year and I feel like sometimes it just like it feels like it's working and sometimes I feel like I don't know how to swim backstroke. Um, and I don't really know why it was like worse in the final than it was um, in previous finals or semifinals. But like it honestly probably was just like the nerves. I feel like when I get nervous, I kind of like my technique and backstroke just kind of goes out the window and then everything kind of starts to go downhill. But yeah, it just, I think I was nervous and yeah, it wasn't my best, but then yeah, I was able to have a good breaststroke split and that kind of helped save me. <laughs> when you're <clears throat> finishing a 200 IM, like on the freestyle leg, is it, is it similar to how you might swim a second 50 of a hundred freestyle, at least in technically? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, it's kind of just about like it, just knowing that it hurts like really bad, but that I'm still going pretty fast. And yeah, I feel like it's literally just about kind of turning my brain off, especially like the last 25 and just literally like giving it all I have and just hoping for the best. Like, I feel like sometimes I'm like, I have no idea like where I am in this race or if I'm going to touch, you know, anywhere near the top, but I kind of just have to give it all I have no matter what. And, uh, you felt pretty good about the result. I mean, mm -hmm. best time. Well, it wasn't the best time actually was it? In, in Paris. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was kind of, yeah, I won a best time at Olympic trials and then I was like a 10th off of that, I think in the final in okay. Paris, okay. but yeah. So I was kind of like, I was, I knew I was capable of going faster than I went at Olympic trials, but I also like at the end of a long meet, I was pretty happy with that and obviously very happy with a silver medal. So, um, you know, I was content with it, you know, for the end of a long meet, I was like, I'll, I'll take it. I wasn't really sure if I'd be able to make it this far anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, for, for someone who, you know, at some point in their career was like kind of known for their shorter events, <laughs> Mm -hmm. especially in the, in, in the NCAA, you're the American record holder in the 50 free to medal in two, two hundreds at an Olympics. Like, I know I always joke. Good. Like, I'm like, I'm Loki, like a mid distance swimmer, but like <laughs> I'm in sprint group. So I don't, yeah. I don't identify as mid distance, but yeah, it is kind of crazy that, 
yeah, that is how everything turned out this year. <laughs> um, and so I, I think the timeline on this is right. The day eight was the final of the 200 IM. And then that did that morning, did you swim prelims of the medley relay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sw Yeah, that's what I did that morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you, were you, were you good with that? Do you feel like that? I mean, we know how it worked out, but mm -hmm. like, do you feel like that went well? Did you have any trepidations about how, how, how all those events shook out just because you at that point had quite a few races under your belt? Yeah. I mean, I definitely was, I wasn't sure about that decision, but after talking with Todd, he kind of made me feel confident that swimming, that it would kind of like, you know, it wouldn't hurt me to get in and, you know, swim a hundred freestyle and, you know, try not to, you know, kill myself in the race, but be able to give a good effort just to get, you know, the team USA back in, you know, in a good final position. So I feel like that was kind of the plan. And yeah, I was, I wasn't like, I don't, think it hurt me really to swim it. I definitely think sometimes it, you know, can be like a good warm up to, you know, do something like that in the morning, um, kind of going into a final session. So yeah, I was, I was happy I did it and happy that I could help, you know, the team then win gold the next night, which was very exciting to watch. Just casually going a 52 seven in prelims, no big deal. Well, <laughs> I did, I did have to push it a little bit in that one because the race was pretty tight, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so then, so then your Olympics is over, you have a media day, you go home. Um, and now, now here we are. So, so, uh, what, what's next? So you're doing world cups. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what went into that decision? Did you know that pre Olympics, pre trials? just a week ago? Yeah, no, I made the decision to go. Me and Reagan both kind of were like talking about this. I think it was back in the spring when like we got an email about it, but um, I decided to go because yeah, I was kind of like, I mean, I knew I didn't want to be done swimming and yeah, I don't really know how much longer I'm going to swim. Like maybe a while, maybe not. I don't really know, but I was kind of like, I feel like I should take advantage of this opportunity, um, especially now that I well, you know, I decided to like take the semester off and I was like, I feel like I want to take advantage of the opportunities that swimming's giving me to travel and get to race in, you know, all these cool places. Um, and so that's kind of what I feel like this fall is about for me is just having fun with swimming and racing and getting to travel a bit um, and just having new experiences that, you know, I might not get to have again um, because of swimming. And so, yeah, I just thought it'd be super fun and it'd be just a good experience for me as like kind of like a newly professional swimmer, seeing how I like, you know, just kind of being on my own more and traveling and kind of having to, you know, trust myself more and not having Todd there to kind of hold my hand through everything. So I feel like it'll just be a good learning experience for me. As a, <laughs> as a, as a swim fan, very excited. <laughs> yes. I think especially uh, obviously for american swimmers short course meters is something mm -hmm. that a lot of uh college swimmers and professionals don't get to compete in very often and yeah. so uh when when there's opportunities it's it's really fun to yeah. watch <laughs> yeah i'm definitely excited to race more short course meters because yeah i've only done it like twice at short course worlds but I feel like it'll be better to get to do it a few times um, and hopefully, you know, get better as I go. And then, um, yeah, hopefully also race some at Short Course Worlds in December. What events are you thinking? There's so many possibilities. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely 100 IM. That is one <laughs> that I have been dying to do. And I haven't been able to do it at Short Course Worlds because you need a valid time to swim it there. Right. <laughs> um, so I've never swam it before, so I don't have a valid time, but now hopefully I'll get to swim it at World Cup, but I haven't decided. I haven't decided at all what I'm swimming. That haven't really looked at that yet, but um, you know, probably the usuals. I mean, yeah, but like there's 50s, like the, you know, it's like I feel like yeah. I can think of nine events off the top where it's like I think yeah. Kate could probably do pretty well in those. 
Yeah, I'll have to take a look at the lineup. Don't want to don't want to do any terrible doubles, so I'll have to see what what looks like it'll be a nice lineup for me. Okay. Well, no Iron Lady schedules, fine. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> um, but that is that is very exciting and are <clears throat> Okay, I'm sorry if this is um, a sore subject. Are you the world record holder in the 100 yard I am? I don't know if I am. I, I mean, I there's not really a world record. In that. I mean, it's wow. either, yeah, I mean, it's either me or Gretchen. Um, <laughs> I know we've gone back and forth on it a few times, so I have no idea who ended up with the last one. <laughs> Fair enough. That I should know that. Um, yeah, I figured that's something you would know. I, <laughs> I think it's Gretchen, uh, it but, maybe, but maybe now short course meters. Hello, Kate Douglas. Maybe we'll see. That's not what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's very exciting. I, uh, you've obviously done some work in and out of the pool with Ken Ono. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to give him a shout out. I was thinking about him b before this interview and uh, an interesting question I could ask you about him. And every I've gotten to spend a little bit of time with him, and he's so easy to talk to, and he's so easy to be around. Uh, and he texts me sometimes about uh, swimming things, which is super fun because he's just so interested in swimming, but yeah. he's also such like such a nerd. Yeah. And so he really brings like a new lens to swimming. And he's also so curious about things. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, yeah. So I'm wondering if just spending time with him has changed how you look at swimming, but also just how, how, how you approach, um, your day to day in, in terms of, uh, the curiosity. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think, you know, hearing just him talk about swimming and yeah, he has like, I feel like he just has like so much information about like everything that he just wants to like, you know, give everyone and help everyone. And so it's been interesting to like hear, you know, what he has to say about, you know, certain things in my races or my swimming because, you know, then those are just, you know, little things that I could choose to work on. And, you know, that would, you know, hopefully help me improve. And yeah, I think it's just awesome, like how much he cares, like about all of us. And like, he's so interested and wants to help us because he cares so much about swimming and the sport and all that. And I think it's just been super cool to just like learn from him with all that. And he's been so helpful in my career in swimming and even out of the water. So yeah, it's definitely, I feel like, you know, made me more interested in things that I would kind of, you know, just, you know, not really think much about um, before. So yeah, it's been, you know, a huge positive for me. Uh, are you planning on working with him more in the classroom at all? Um, I'm not sure yet. I am kind of taking a step back from my like master's degree right now, just cause I'm um, like, I just want to enjoy, you know, life right now, travel a little bit and I'm, I'm in no rush to finish my degree. Um, so, but I am, you know, going to keep, you know, thinking of ways to kind of further that, you know, my degree along and my career along um, with, you know, Ken Ono in the future. So I don't really know what that'll look like yet, but Hopefully, we'll, I mean, we'll definitely continue, you know, working together a little bit because um, we're both here in Charlottesville still, so. He's right there. <clears throat> Why not? Um, well, Kate, thank you as always for taking the time to sit down mm -hmm. and chat. It's, it's been great catching up with you. Um, I really appreciate it and good luck taking it easy. Thanks, yeah. You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.